Hey everybody, welcome to the third video of the OneGage video series where we review and go over everything that the OneGage Digital Dash can do. So in this video, we're going to be discussing different sensor input options. Um, there are three different options. We're gonna do a video on each one. Um, the first option, as we discussed in the overview video, is just using standard sensors and running those sensors into the OneGage. Um, the second option would be OBD2, and the third option would be CAN bus. But in this one, we're going to focus on standard sensors. So standard sensors are very simple. Um, you really have two different types of sensors. You've got analog sensors, um, and you've got digital sensors. So analog sensors are usually one or two wires. Um, it's got a wire that provides voltage to the sensor, and then either the sensor grounds in, in the metal of the um, mounting, wherever the port um, is that you mount the sensor in, or if there's a second wire, then that's your ground wire. So analog sensors are very durable, very easy to use. It's what you're gonna find on your stock vehicle. Um, the thing is, every analog sensor, every sensor part number manufactured by a different uh, manufacturer, or even different sensors made by the same manufacturer, have different resistance ranges. And that means that the one gauge has to be programmed specifically for the sensor that you're using. So we have about probably 10 to 20 different analog sensors already programmed into the unit that you can use. Um, but if you want to use your own sensor that you already have, and we don't have it programmed, we would just need to have that resistance information. Um, you can provide that if you can find that information online, or you can actually test the sensor and measure the resistance as um, temperature changes. So these sensors wire into the first six screw terminals on the one gauge hub, A1 through A6. Um, the other option, and what's typically a little bit more accurate, is digital sensors. Now digital sensors have at least three wires. There's going to be a ground wire, a voltage wire, typically five volts, and a signal wire. So these would, this is a pressure sensor. Um, these are what you typically want to use for things like oil, fuel pressure, um, and it's the type of sensor that we recommend for pressures. So these use the B screw terminals, B1 through 7 on the one gauge hub. And then we also provide five volt and ground um, screw terminals so that you can power the unit as well. Um, another type of sensor that we use uh, are oxygen sensors if you're looking to measure AFR, air fuel ratio, or lambda. Um, oxygen sensors will have a five volt output from a typical sensor that would also run into the B screw terminals. So um, that you requires a, an oxygen sensor and an oxygen sensor controller. So um, the controller is what usually has the analog zero to five volt output included. We do have other sensor options as I've discussed in the previous two, vid previous two videos. Um, EGTs, so high temperature sensors if you wanted to measure exhaust gas or cylinder head temperature. Um, basically, that's for um, temperatures that go above 250 degrees Fahrenheit. And those do require a special module that's mounted to the circuit board. And we use K-type thermo thermocouple sensors. Um, if you purchase the sensor from us, we'll include a probe. You can also choose to use your own probes, and we can just mount the module, um, which provides extra screw terminals for those sensors specifically. Um, tachometer. Is a, is a bit of a unique situation because every vehicle has a different um, style of tachometer output. So on the screw terminals on the one gauge hub, there is a tachometer input um, that can use a digital square wave tachometer signal from your vehicle if your vehicle provides one. Typically, newer vehicles will provide those. Um, the MSD ignition coils, those provide those different um, a number of different options will provide that signal without the need for an adapter. But there are some um, engines, especially diesel engines, or if you're using your coil or your, your HEI distributor, for example, those would require an adapter. And we do have an entire information sheet in the instructions on um, how to set up your tachometer and if you might need an adapter or not. And then for speedometer, um, we provide two different GPS options. Um, we'll talk about those a little bit more in detail in um, a future video, but there's the standard GPS, which updates about five times per second. It's great for daily driving, works well. Or a race spec GPS, which updates between 10 and 15 times per second, depending on the configuration. And is much better if you're accelerating quickly, wanting to measure lap times, things like that. So 
that's our standard sensor inputs. Um, if you're looking for the simplest setup, we recommend you purchase the sensors from us. They'll come pre-wired, ready to run, ready to install, already tested and ensure they're working. Um, if you are looking to save a little bit of money or you're looking to use your own sensors, it's best to reach out to us. That way we can make sure the unit is configured to read the sensors that you're using. So we appreciate your time. Thank you for watching. Um, there'll be more information and links to other videos in the description below. Thanks again.